over the last several years, there's been a lot of um, progress made in identifying recurring mutations in myeloid neoplasms, including MDS and AML. Um, and there's very little data regarding what these mu mutations um, mean for prognosis um, after allogeneic transplant, um, which is the, really the only curative um, treatment for high-risk AML and MDS. So um, there was basically a need to, to know what kind of, or to find, to learn more about what um, the prognosis of these mutations mean associated with transplant. These are patients um, in our cohort. Um, there are 123 patients. Um, about approximately half had myelodysplastic syndrome, um, and about half had acute myeloid leukemia. Um, most of them had high-risk disease um, where there was an indication to undergo allogeneic transplant. Um, their, the median age was around 53, um, and there wasn't really a significant difference in, in gender, so they're both males and females. Um, so they're, they're a population, a general population that you would expect um, who would need to undergo an allogeneic transplant. So what we found, um, we looked at a panel of 60 genes. Um, and what we found um, primarily was that complex cytogenetics is associated with poor outcome, which has been known before, but also in particular TET2 mutations um, was associated with poor survival. Um, we also actually did not sort of a positive negative finding is that we didn't find necessarily association with poor survival and some of the mutations that have previously been found to be associated with poor survival after transplant, that being P53 mutations, um, ASXL1, DNMT3A mutations, um, and I think that our findings need to be confirmed and validated and other studies need to be done in terms of other interactions that might be occurring, combination of mutations, clonal burden of the mutations, um, so there's still a lot to be done. So TET2 mutations are commonly recurring mutations in myelodysplastic syndromes and in general myeloid neoplasms. Um, it is a um, you know epigenetic lesion. So um, it one you know we or people do think that it's sort of a, a founding mutation or sort of initiating mutation in regards to the pathogenesis of the disease. Um, it's previously what's sort of interesting is it's pre previously been associated with response to things like hypomethylating agents. And we actually also found in the study that TET2 mutations were associated with response prior to transplant, however, still resulted in poor survival after transplant. So, you know, the significance of this still needs to be further elucidated, but sort of an interesting finding. I think the biggest take-home message is that um, mutations and next-generation sequencing and deep sequencing are, have really revolutionized the way that we're thinking about um, treatment and prognosis of um, myeloid neoplasms and that um, you know, we're just continuing to study um, how we can use them better in our standard practice and what they mean for treatment, particularly for transplant.